um, now getting back from the doctor's house and moving into uh, the day-to-day -day life, uh, many times one comes across uh, pairs wherein the husband is the cause of stress uh, for the wife and the wife is the cause of stress for the husband. Many times that happens. And in many uh, workplace uh, situations, uh, the boss is the cause of stress for uh, people who are working for him and sometimes some of the uh, workers or employees, uh, they are also cause of stress for the boss. So we need to do something on the interpersonal relationship in order to have a healthy heart. Are there any tips on uh, those lines from you? I think uh, when you, you mentioned the first part of your question was about matrimonial harmony. And I think having a near perfect emotional bond with your partner and also understanding the fact is that if there is too much friction, it's going to be harmful to both parties and both are going to be mourning. So a better approach is to keep that stress level and friction level to its minimum within the marriage as in unit. In a workplace environment, I think it is very important to have mutual respect for your peers and colleagues with, with whom you spend about six to eight hours of your working day every day. You need to recognize the talents of others and even applaud that talent and I'm sure there will be a reciprocal relationship when it is uh, your turn. And I think that workplace environment and that self-disciplining of employees is very important in any workplace. So the bottom line is understanding. If uh, the under understanding is good, uh, it not only increases your efficiency, it also <laughs> takes care of your heart. And uh, with the understanding that there is so much to learn, India is changing uh, in leaps and bounds, and it's like a very prominent economic player on the global scene. And now uh, there has been educational reforms also introduced in America, uh, in India. And uh, Dr. Mukesh, uh, you have uh, worked uh, in India and America, both places. So tell me a little bit about the education reform bill, which has been introduced by Pres uh, Minister uh, Mr. Kapil Sibbal. Yes. And uh, uh, when foreign universities would be allowed to operate on the Indian scene, how is the scene going to be? Uh, I think this is a significant legislation in Indian Parliament introduced by the Education and Human Resource Minister uh, Kapil Sibyl. Uh, it is also a business opportunity for every American university and even European universities and including Australia is that for the first time in India, uh, American universities can have campus-based education platforms all across India. Yes, there is an agreement, there is a retainer for the amount of profits that they make to be retained back in India up to about $11 million. But I think it is still a significant step because for India to become a truly economic superpower or at least a power on par with its closest competitor like China, education is going to be the key. Uh, I, sh uh, I would encourage India to allow American universities to develop campuses in India in harmony with existing universities like the Maulana Azad or the Lokmanya Tilak University. I think we are all from that generation and I think we got excellent education. So American education is good. It may be a good icing on the cake as opposed to elimination of the cake. There is also an opportunity for co-branding with Indian universities. Co-branding is allow the existing universities to stay and a partnership with American. It is like McDonald's is good in India. People love it, kids love it. But I don't think it should uh, eliminate the need of idli sambar restaurants in India. That is also very important. So there is room for coexistence. And I think American universities' arrival in, in, in India will eventually be an economic boom for India because it will raise the intellectual capital standards of India and which is going to help India in the long run. I've uh, been visiting India as a consulting uh, doctor and uh, you're working closely with Indian doctors and probably you also operate in India as well? Yes, I have affiliations in uh, about four major hospitals uh, in uh, in India. I, so I'm in touch with all the local cardiac surgeons and the cardiologists and even the administrators like the CEO of major hospitals like Just Look, Breach Candy and others. I always during every visit try to bring them on par with what is happening in the Western world or the advanced world in terms of science going forward. And I try to also arrange visits by the doctors from India 
to the United States where they can see the newest procedures, they can interact with the surgeons that are using these new technologies and they can impart that in India. I think long gone are those days where Indian patients needed to travel to America or to Europe for any kind of treatment. Now all is available in India and Indian doctors are one of the finest in the world. I think they do on par a job like the American doctors and sometimes even exceed those standards. So India is in very safe hands when it comes to doctors, provided they keep themselves educated with the newest things happening in the West and it's easily implementable in India because the hospitals are the topmost standards in India. Uh, Dr. Mukesh, as a patient, many times one get to hear the stories, uh, not as a patient, but as a common man. And sometimes we read in the newspapers also that uh, some of the doctors pay more attention to what is going to uh, be added to their bank accounts. Uh, and so they sometimes uh, advise on some tests or investigations which are not necessary. Now here, there is a very fine line. Maybe they are necessary. It is the discretion of the doctor. Uh, so what would be your comment on uh, this and also compare uh, the system of America and India as far as this particular side is concerned? Uh, in the United States, there is a lot of monitoring of what a doctor requests in terms of investigation. In fact, with the new health care uh, reform bill, that is going to be still under strict surveillance. So doctors in the United States seldom use unnecessary investigations. In fact, the only reason they use more than one investigation is what we call is that is to prevent them from litigation. So they can justify an investigation far more should matters go into the court of law. Um, that is called uh, you know preventive medicine from a doctor's perspective, which is very good for the patient. And the insurance company takes uh, care of the bills. In India, it is different. Uh, just like most maladies of society, even healthcare in India, there are some elements, and this is a very small fraction of doctors who indulge in you know, unnecessary investigation and or pushing the patient around here and there, which is detrimental for the patient in the long run. And hopefully there will be legislation in India whereby this can be monitored just like the Western world so that those current practices can be eliminated. But I must admit having worked in India also is that, but it does exist in society.